I'm thinking about creativity again today. I don't think about it as much as I used to. But I'm doing a, a session at the university I used to work at tomorrow for a group of MA students. And it's about, well the whole weekend's about creativity, so I'm being kind of invited to think in those terms again. And one of the things I'm thinking about, I don't think I'll be talking about this tomorrow, but one of the things I'm thinking about is to do with memory, I suppose, and the relationships between, well, two things actually. One is to do the, the relationship between creativity and memory, and the other is to do with this kind of perceived uh, difference that, they're see that we, well, do we assume there to be between people who are creative and people who aren't. You know, I meet a lot of people who say that they're not creative, which always like, strikes me as slightly surprising. Because as soon as they start telling you their dreams, or they start, um, oh, anything really, any narrating any part of their life, you realise how creative they are. But they don't uh, see themselves as that, and 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 nothing, and you know, nothing about the way that they live their lives suggests that they invest in the creativity that they have. So there's something interesting for me there like, about that potential relationship between one to do with memory. I'm not sure if this isn't just an analogy, and it's then this other to do with perceiving oneself as being creative or acting in a way which would be characterised as creative. Uh, the reason why I think it's got to do with memory is what I sometimes have said to my students in the past. I'm not sure if I entirely stand by this now, but uh, what occasionally I've said to my students in the past is that you know the only difference between a person who's creative and a person who isn't creative is that creative people write it down. If they don't write it down, they draw a picture, or if they don't draw a picture, they make a model, or if they don't make a model, they make some kind of trace of what they've been thinking about. Or they build something, or they erase something, or they make some kind of change in the environment in which they're, that they're moving through that records what they've been thinking about. And the trace that can, and it's a trace, you know, a piece of writing or an object, or just some kind of physical representation that they can go back to and, 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 and change again. Because I think if you don't do that, if you, it doesn't matter how many ideas you have, if you don't write them down or make some kind of change in your environment reflecting those ideas, they just slip away like memories or like dreams. They just slip away. And I, I think, I mean, certainly I've had that experience a lot of, a lot of the time. When I have a great idea, well, it's not, not usually a great idea, but I have some kind of an idea which might be worth pursuing. And I find if I don't write it down, I'll make a video of it or do something. I'll, I'll, there's no chance of me remembering it an hour later, which is how I started making these videos in the first place, actually. Just to try to remember stuff. Uh, so why am I thinking about that? Well, I suppose what's, um, what it's making me think of is that piece of research, which I'm not sure if I've referred to before, by Maglio and Kirsch, to do with, what would they call this? I can't remember what they called it, but it, it, it was kind of framed as a way of extending cognition outside of the mind into actions. I think they make a distinction between something like pragmatic actions and, um, they don't call it cognitive action, but it's something like that. Actions which don't serve any useful purpose, they just act as a kind of extension of, of thought. And they give examples of like chess players, for example, who were um, particularly novice chess players, who before they make a move, they'll pick up the piece that they're thinking about moving and try it out in various places first. Now, of course, you don't need to move the piece to imagine things. You could just imagine the piece there and it would fulfill exactly the same function. But by, um, by actually trying the piece out, they say, you're effectively um, outsourcing some of the, uh, the cognitive work to your environment, to your body, to the object that you're holding in your hand, to the board and so on. So you don't have to spend those resources thinking and holding those representations in your mind anyway. The environment does it for you. Uh, and I, I can't remember exactly what they called it, but let's call it cognitive actions. So they do these little cognitive actions. Uh, they also did a really nice piece of research because people playing Tetris, that game where different coloured, different shaped blocks drop down from the top of a computer screen and you have to align them at the bottom. And again, they find that people playing Tetris who are very good at Tetris rotate the blocks as they're falling because it, it makes it easier to imagine whether this particular different shaped block will fit into a particular depression at the bottom of the screen. And again, you're kind of outsourcing or offloading some of the cognitive load to your environment. 
Uh, and, the, and, and that by extension that applies to things like writing down the telephone numbers so you don't have to remember it or making a note of an idea so you don't forget it and here we're very close to what I think uh, I think I started off by talking about really which is that you know when you're being creative you're constantly outsourcing or offloading that creative work to the environment around you by you know, writing something down or by making an object or by leaving a trace behind as you walk or whatever it is you do really uh, and it's a trace you can go back to and reshape you don't have to men you don't have to focus your resources on simply maintaining that idea in, in consciousness you can uh, do something else and spend those re resources differently one of the things I find interesting, of course, is that the end result of those creative projects, those creative processes, the, the novels and the songs and the paintings and the sculptures and all the other kinds of artworks or inventions or whatever the other end results of those creative processes are, are the actual things that you've... The, 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 out, the offloaded stuff, it's the outsourced material that you're looking at. So in effect, you're looking at the extension of someone's mind. You're looking at... at uh, the workings of memory and the processing of memory and the processing of thought uh, physicalized into space and uh, and you're seeing the traces of that traces which have been have gone over and been reassessed and reevaluated and reassembled until it becomes some kind of an object or a event or an artifact go on guy <laughs>